In one sense, businessman Oscar Francois has not come a long way at all, even though he's sitting in the office of the CEO of Oscar Francois Limited in a modern office building in the heart of Port of Spain. He hasn't traveled far geographically because the company's headquarters is on the site of what was once his mother's house. And that's where he started his own business 57 years ago. Francois has indeed come a long way. The only child of a single mother, he left school at 14, but rose to become the head of two companies. Oscar Francois Limited employs 280 people and distributes a range of products around the region, while Intersol manufactures toiletries and other items and provides jobs for 25 more. But when others went on to college, young Oscar had to get a job. One day, she asked Mr. Vera, who ran Ernest Vera and Company Limited, um, I think they were 19, number 19, Shackon Street, whether he had an off opening for an office boy job or anything like that, because I was home doing nothing. All my friends at my age had gone back to school. They all went to Queen's Royal College or St. Mary's College. And he said, sent him, and I went for an interview. And he offered me the job as an office boy. Then the same Mrs. Sampson moved to Agostini's and told him about another opening there for an office boy. He got the job, more than doubling his previous wage of $3 a week. He moved steadily upwards at Agostini over the next 17 years, becoming head clerk and then a salesman in the pharmaceuticals division. But that wasn't enough to satisfy him. At 31, he met his wife-to-be, Alicia. Thinking ahead again, he realized he would have to take a chance and go out on his own to finance the life he was determined his family would have one day. I left my job at Agostini the last day of February 1958 and started the first day of March 1958. I loaded my car with inventory and I left here at about six in the morning and went straight to Point Fortin. He also educated himself, spending hours in the library to learn Latin medical terms so that when he visited doctors to show them his samples, he could explain the benefits of the prescription drugs he was offering. I introduced the products that I was going to market to the pharmacies. All of them were well known by me. And in one or two of them, I left inventory on consignment to ensure that if a doctor writes a prescription, it will be filled. And I did that right through the whole country. Francois had no mentors and no family financial resources to fall back on, but he was sure he would succeed. Drawing on every aspect of his experience, Francois made a success of his business. Former managing director of Republic Bank Limited, John Jardim, became Francois's bank manager in the 1970s and remembers him as an outstanding customer. I think Oscar is a, by nature a quiet man, but he's, he's determined and um, knows the basics of, of running a business, you know, the ability to um, deal with cash flows, not overextend the business and um, look at how the particular lines he's in are developing. But always ambitious and forward-thinking, he expanded its range nevertheless. He began distributing veterinary drugs and set up the Intersol factory in 1967 with two partners, whom he later bought out, to manufacture aerosol products and toiletries, including the Fabergé brand. When his daughters graduated, they joined Oscar Francois Limited too. Thus, thanks to Oscar Francois's open-mindedness, his daughters were able not only to support him in his business, but also followed him into it, ensuring its continuity. At 88, Mr. Francois still goes into the office every day. Apart from the energy sector, this, this economy of ours um, depends very heavily on small and medium-sized businesses.
Despite being a household name with 57 years of achievement, he was not only elated but also shocked when he got the call to tell him the news. When I got the, the telephone call in Tobago from the president of the Trinidad and Tobago Chamber of Industry and Commerce, advising me that I was being considered for an award for what I have done business-wise. Will I accept? And I had no option but to say yes. For his outstanding record, it is an honor this evening for the Trinidad and Tobago Chamber of Industry and Commerce to induct Mr. Oscar Francois into its Business Hall of Fame. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Oscar H. Francois. And I'd like to invite Mr. Trustrail to do the honors of making the presentation to Mr. Francois. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. As a 14-year-old boy, heading out to work for the first time without the benefit of a university or secondary education, I never would have imagined that more than 70 years after, I would be standing here speaking to such an illustrious group of leaders in commerce of commerce and government. I must thank the Trinidad and Tobago Chamber of Industry and Commerce for granting me this great honor of being inducted into the Hall of Fame and for considering me worthy to be included among the pioneers of in the business sector. Most importantly, I must thank the many people on my long journey who unselfishly gave me advice and encouragement. In accepting this award, I must acknowledge the 17-year period during which I was employed at Agostini Brothers Limited. Mrs. Sampson, who was my mentor when I first went to work as an office boy many years ago. The many doctors who guided my studies as a fledgling pharmaceutical salesman, especially my wonderful wife, Alicia, who 57 years ago gave me the reason, maturity, and strength to settle down and raise not only a successful business, but four wonderful daughters whom have all gone on to become qualified and highly competent professionals in their own right. The customers throughout the Caribbean who have supported the growth of the distribution and manufacturing company. As a grandfather many times over, with God's grace, I still enjoy my work, my family, and my friends. I know we live in challenging times, but I have lived long enough to remember that we, ha we have, as a nation, been through many tough times in our history, and with the fortitude, ingenuity, and commitment of each of us, this will pass. In closing, I hope that the Chamber is rewarded for organizing this events of award and function by opening the eyes of many potential businessmen of the future to get out there and do their thing 
and keep our economy going. Thank you.